Hey guys, Will Terry here. It's been a while since I made a video. And uh, I'm gonna go through a lot of things in this video. There's gonna be a lot of updates. There's gonna be updates on what's happening in my life, what's happening in projects that I'm working on. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the title, how to make money with NFTs, um, how to guarantee that you can make money with NFTs. And um, if you stick to the end, I'm going to talk about some personal stuff like uh, life stuff and investing and things like that for anybody that cares, but I'm not going to muck that up with uh, the channel unless you want to stick around to the end. I'm also going to show you my studio. So let's get into it. Uh, okay, so as you can see, the landscape down here is a little bit different. I'm wearing this goofy helmet. I've got a bike back here somewhere. I can hardly see what you guys are seeing. So I'm gonna, it's bright. It's also March, it's supposed to be cold, but not here. It is 80 degrees today. And uh, the reason that I'm down here is because we moved down here. Um, if you guys have been following my channel for a while, you know that I got re remarried after my wife died. And uh, my wife's mother and father live down here. So now my, my uh, mother and father live down here too and we wanted to change the pace. It was a mutual decision to move down here, but we wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for, for mom and dad living down here. Um, but I think it's really good to change your scenery from time to time. I love the mountain biking down here. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Uh, it's gonna be hot, I know that. Everybody, that. everybody that lives down here loves to say, oh, you're gonna hate it. Uh, are you prepared for this? Uh, you, you know, uh, you're gonna die down here. I lived in Fresno, it was 110. Yes, this is gonna be a little bit hotter. We even had 115 days out there. So, um, and yes, I know this is gonna be a lot more of it. Um, so, moved down here, um, and uh, I go mountain biking with the wife, here she is. This was us last night, and uh, both of us are just having a great time. And uh, so that's the update there. And then I wanna update you guys on the, the books that I uh, ran on Kickstarter, what they don't teach in art school. And um, the fact that we have shipped out all the books, except for those who haven't filled out their survey and those who got lost in the mail or something and we're working through those. So if you ordered a book on Kickstarter or Indiegogo and you didn't get it, um, I want you to click the link down below to my assistant or get his email that I put down below there and email him with your backer number, your, you know, your Kickstarter backer number, Indiegogo backer number, your name and your updated address and he'll work with you. He'll make sure you email him and that way he'll have your email and he'll get back with you. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to update is if you want, if you missed out on the Kickstarter and you want one of these books, um, just check the link below for well-fed illustrators and it'll take you right there and you can order one or you can get the ebook or audio book as an add-on with that if you want just the ebook go to my willterry.com site and go to my etsy shop and you can get the ebook or audio book alone there okay um so what have i been doing and how come i haven't been making videos i've had uh, a bunch of friends um, you know, say, well, you're going to kill your channel. You're not uploading videos. And am I spinning around too much? I think I'm moving. I just rode really hard to get here. <laughs> so I, I'm still kind of amped up. Um, but a lot of people have told me, well, Will, how come you're not uploading? You're not uploading to Instagram. That's part of what I'm going to update you on now. So there's, I guess there's more than one reason. One, I always blame uh, SVS and you know our, our online school svslearn.com uh, with the work that I have to do there and the podcast so a lot of my creative energy and a lot of my ideas are going there um, and so that's one of the reasons why I don't um, uh, I haven't been making videos as much the other reason is when you get married again <laughs> and you change your whole life it takes a lot of time to get to know someone and it takes a lot of time um, to to get your routine figured out again. And we are just getting into that rhythm now where we've been in kind of the honeymoon phase for, um, well, a year and a half. And 
we're we're just starting to get to the point where she f has her things that she wants to do. I have my time, and I'm finding that I have a little bit more time now, and she has more time. It's been a, it's been an amazing journey, um, getting married again and sharing my life with with Lily, and um, it's. It just there, there before I had my routine and I had like all my time carved out for doing things that I wanted to do when I wanted to do them. And, um, when you get married again, at least this is what I found. I think we've both found is you don't want to be, you don't want to assume and you don't want to be selfish and you don't want to, um, treat the other person. Um, well, you, you can't treat them as, uh, the way that you, treated someone that you had been with for 30 years it's just impossible so I really had to pick and choose which things I was going to let go and we have had so much fun just doing things together things that you know I could never do with Lori because she was sick and so we've traveled we've um, we've been biking a lot we've been hanging out together and and just doing fun things together and there just wasn't time to do all the things that I was doing. And I really had to pick and choose. And so that's why I haven't been feeding this YouTube channel. Hopefully I'll find time to do it more, uh, but I can't make any promises. So that's why I'm gonna make, that's why this video is gonna be so long as I'm making um, the update now um, of all the things that I haven't uh, updated you guys with. So, uh, and then we're also making a big push with SVS for uh, kind of a big announcement, a big, um, some big plans there that we can't, we can't announce yet. So anyway, some things that we're working on that have taken up a lot more time as well. I'm gonna shift hands because the camera's heavy. Um, so that's another reason. Um, and I have been working and illustrating a sequel to What They Don't Teach in Art School. It's a playbook for it's the, it's the ultimate playbook for how to run a Kickstarter for artists. It's a checklist book. It has uh, 90 items on a checklist. Um, it's got pla a place to journal in there. Um, so when you're, it's basically, it's basically my playbook and a and a playbook from a lot of other creators on how to run the perfect Kickstarter. So that will be. I'm almost finished with the writing on that and the illustrations for that. Uh, I've got about seven or eight more illustrations to go on that. So that's going to be coming soon. And for my international backers on Kickstarter, I promised them that the ebook version of that for free. So stay tuned on that. Um, and that was because of the shipping costs so much to get the, the book over there that I wanted to do something to, to help out there. Um, at the end, I'm going to share with you my studio and the house that we bought. And again, I'm going to talk about investing, but right now I want to talk about how to make money with these NFTs that you've been hearing about. A disclaimer, I haven't made an NFT and I haven't made any money on it, but I'm going to tell you, um, and I put this, we put this in the podcast yesterday. So if you listen to our podcast, you'll hear, hear us talking about it. Um, that, that will air, I think in two weeks. Or from the time of this video, a week and a half probably. But um, my playbook for making, if you really wanted to do well with NFTs, you've got to have one, you've got to have a long game. You've got to, um, you've got to go in with a multi-year plan, okay? So the first thing that I would do is I would uh, set up a YouTube channel. Uh, that and or social media um, and make an announcement on your on your channel and make a game plan that you're going to release an NFT every day or every other day or once a week but it's going to be regular and this is all you're going to be working on and this is all you're going to do I don't think that you can if you're so the the, the thing with with any platform right whether it's whether it's doing well on on Facebook or Twitter, you know, some people have these massive Instagram accounts where they they make a print, they put it in their shop, and it sells the same day. They make another another piece of art, and they sell prints of it the next day, or they sell the original. Um, and they're constantly selling originals. They're they're um, auctioning off their originals, and they and you know you look at these people that that are um, 
uh, you know, doing really well and you say to yourself, gosh, I wish I was like them. I wish I could be like that. I wish I could make money like they do. It's like they just make a piece of art and they sell it. I mean, how do I ever get to that point? And you have to understand and remember that they didn't start there. So what you need to do is you need to be regular and you need to, um, you need to make, I mean, there's a, it's going to sound overly simplified, but you have to make great art. And that means it ha the visuals have to be really stunning. Your quality has to be stellar. It doesn't have to be in the beginning. You can get better over time. Um, but if you, but you know, the successful people are going to have really good visuals are going to have really good art that's appealing, um, on the visual side, but they're also, and more importantly, they're going to have great ideas. So if you have great ideas, um, and you're putting them out every day and you know, you, you have a, you talk about it on your YouTube channel and you, you share your story behind the creation and the trials that you're going through and the changes, um, in the technology um of um nfts and for those who don't know what i'm talking about with an nft it's a it's a non-fungible token which basically is and i'm going to talk about this in investing a little bit more but it's basically look at these guys coming through i don't know if you can see them here they're on those those wheels those uh those mono wheel things i don't even know if you can see them back there <laughs> So anyway, um, they're, they're basically uh, original pieces of art. I don't want to go into what they are um, right now because you can easily just watch a video on YouTube. Like what, just type in what is an NFT and they'll tell you. But basically, um, the problem I see with a lot of people is they, it's like anything. If, you, if you're new to Instagram and you're like, well, how do I make money? And someone says, well, you got to post your work to Instagram. Well, okay, so you start an account and you're going to start posting work to Instagram. And you're not going to sell any art. You're not going to make any money because you don't have any followers. The people that are going to make money with NFTs, it's like the NFL that's, or uh, the, the NBA that's selling the Top Shot um, video clips as NFTs. Um, or people, the artist that uh, sold, you know, three over $3 million. He got made three, over $3 million on selling all of his um, art on as an NFT. Um, is that they already have a huge following. Okay, so it's like anything else. You got to have a huge following. So the people that are making money with NFTs now had big Instagrams or big Twitters or both or big YouTube channels or were famous like uh, Logan Paul or people like that. And if you are not already, if you don't already have a big following, well, you're not going to be able to just roll into NFTs and start selling um, for big money. But if you are starting right now or you want to start a new project right now, my idea is you, you, you make art f uh, for NFTs only, and you, you know, you you become the painting a day person. I mean, like, like uh, Carol Marin, the painting a day, oil painting a day. The reason why she sold all of them was one, great artist, not great ideas because they were still lifes. Okay, so she just had great art, and she was early on the painting a day scene, um, and sold all of her, her oil paintings. Um, and over time just developed this huge following. So you can do the same thing with NFTs or anything, but you've got to be consistent. You've got to have a, you've got to have endurance. You've got to have great art. You, it wouldn't help. It wouldn't hurt to be young and attractive <laughs> and really charismatic, especially for a YouTube channel, right? To where, you know, not like, not like me, the old guy, Right, but like somebody who is really, really easy on the eyes and and just super energetic and just like this is what I'm going to do today, you know, and and um, and making uh, just doing this thing regularly, and maybe maybe they're a series, you know, maybe this art all fits together in a series so that your series is just ongoing for years. You will get attention, and the cool thing, and and. And, you know, you might ask, well, some people might say, well, Will, are you going to do this? No, I'm not. I have my hands in too many things right now. Sure, I could stop everything and just go for it and see if I could make something like this work. Because I love the idea. I love the fact that you can program them or when you, when you create your NFT, you can create um, the rules and the stipulations to where you as the artist get paid every time 
the NFT resells. And because it uses, uh, because they use smart contracts, you're not beholden or relying on anyone else to pay you like a gallery or something like that. Every time it sells, and this is programmed into the NFT, your digital wallet will gain, if it's on Ethereum, you'll gain a certain amount of um, crypto in Ethereum every time your piece of art sells. And, you know, for some people, they set it up for 5% or 10% or something like that. Um, and, man, what a great technology for artists to be able to get to create a business plan where they get paid. Um, and the more art you make and the more entities you have out there, the more chance you have of getting those those payments starting to roll in so that around the one, two, three, five year mark, you're getting like, I mean, you're just getting constant amounts of money as your artwork resells to someone else. Um, a lot of people are, will, are saying right now that the NFT market is a bubble. I agree, it is, okay? There's no question about that, but I'm not talking about creating. I, I think that there are there there are works that are sold as NFTs that are always going to have value, just like um, you know John Lennon's first guitar or something like. Why why is that guitar special? Because it was John Lennon's, okay. Um, uh, and and uh, and any any uh, any old thing that has value that's sold at auction at Christie's or something like that. It's just a thing. It's, it's, it's usually a pretty common object because of who owned it or the history behind it. It's, it's actually valuable, you know, old coins and things like that. Okay. Well, art is going to be the same way. There's going to be art from that are create that's created as NFTs that will always hold value because of who it came from and, um, and, the rarity of, I mean, the history of it. I guess you could make the argument that every piece of art is rare, but some just sell for a lot more because people really want them. And that's really what it comes down to is do people, do people really want to own them? I think there's a lot of people buying NFTs right now that are just doing it because they're hoping to make money later on and they don't really care about the art. I think if you're creating in, in, in my uh, idea or world of creating um, your own NFTs over time, you know, you're going to sell them. I, I would sell them for very little in the beginning. I would, I would let people basically just, just buy them for very little. I would set the, the, the amounts extremely low because I, the long game for me, the way I see it is over time, as you gain that following, your earlier works are going to become even more valuable and you'll be able to raise your prices over time, just like in a gallery. I think I don't think that the NFT market is really any any different. It's just the technology behind it allows you to have um, to get paid differently. Um, you know, you don't have you don't have to ship your paintings. You don't have to frame them. Um, you don't have to wait for the gallery to pay you. You don't have to wonder if the gallery is screwing you over. Um, when someone buys your art as an NFT, you get paid. So that is my theory. I would love to know what you guys think. This this um, this technology is so new. We're right in the right in the beginning stages of it, and and it's a hot topic right now. But I would love to know in the comments. I'll probably read the comments for the first couple of weeks. So if you roll up on this and um, and leave me a comment, I'd love to to see what you guys think about it. Okay, so on to the studio tour. Okay, so I'm back home now. I'm gonna show you uh, the house we bought, which is this little tiny, little tiny thing. With the roof and uh, it's got our place for our camper, car, and uh, <laughs> got a, driving around on a golf cart in here in this uh, this little retirement community that we bought in. And I'm going to talk about that. This is my little, I'm not going to take you in the house, but, uh, cause we're still moving in, but I'm going to show you my studio, my little, <laughs> my tiny little studio. <laughs> and, uh, so <clears throat> I've got everything I need in here. I got some places for, uh, uh, you know, storage and, uh, I got my, my, of course, my, my setup for podcasting and drawing, and I got my books in here, 
Yeah, a little bit of a backdrop going on. And uh, so yeah, so let me tell you about it. So I'm here and we've got this little home and why do we buy a little tiny home? Well, we did really well on our house that we sold in Utah. And we took, we just, we were gonna go out into the desert out here and buy a big house. Um, that was the original plan. We were gonna have this really nice um, space and just kind of have our dream home out there. Then we really started thinking about it. Um, I'm a big Dave Ramsey follower and I couldn't quite get the house that I wanted and also be debt free. And so because of that, we really had to really rethink. And this is Lily and I sitting down and putting our heads together and, and saying, what do we really want? What are our goals? What are our, um, you know, what are our, what do we believe in? And one of the things that we really believe in is being debt free. So we wanted to pay cash and we could have paid cash for a much bigger house than this. Um, but we wanted to have more money left over for investments. I've been investing for the last about five or six years, but we really thought, you know what, the more responsible thing might be is to actually sock more money away for the future um, and really start to work on kind of our long-term dreams of retirement and stuff. And even as an artist, I, I will never retire. Um, I will, there's so many things that I want to do project-wise with art, but the beauty and the, the, the most amazing life that you could ever have is when you can make the art that you want and you can work on whatever projects you want and you don't, they don't need to make money. And ironically, I found that when I don't need to make money, I end up making more money. I become like more of a money magnet when I don't need, when I'm not nervous about a project making money. It's backwards, but it actually works. And I've actually talked about that on this channel before that um, when you're, when you don't need the money, you can actually create from your heart. You can create from passion and people follow that and you end up being more successful and then all this money starts coming in and you're like, wow, I didn't even really set out to do that. But um, when, you're, when you need money and when you're tight and you're, and you're struggling and you're nervous, it shows. And when that happens, it usually translates into your art and your art usually suffers. So, um, we looked at this. We looked at this community. Now, this is where um, our parents live here in the in the in the resort, and we thought, well, we could be close to them. This isn't permanent. Maybe we'll use this house as a rental down the road, and maybe we will buy a, a different house at some other point. But for right now, we're like, look, this has a little office that you can have that I can be separate, where I can do make videos like this, and I'm not cramping her style and she's not cramping mine if she wants to have her music on or whatever but we have this little separate situation um, when we want to and then I'm home right here we've got um, pools in the park and gyms and tennis I've started playing tennis um, and so anyway so that's why we bought this this little tiny home the reason I wanted to bring that in because part of the the real estate that you invest in does become part of your real estate portfolio. And the decisions that you make, good or bad, in real estate can make or break you for, I mean, years, decades to come. Um, and the house that we lost in the past was way too much house. And we knew that. We were we were thinking, well, we'll buy a big, huge house because then it'll, if when it appreciates, it'll go higher. Well, it didn't. It, we bought at the top of the market and it went down. So now, we may have bought at the top again in this little home. But the beauty is, it's paid for. So no matter what happens, if the value goes up or down, we have a home to live in. And that's a great thing. Um, if and, and we also took advantage of selling it at the top of the market as well, so it didn't matter that, you know, if you sell at the top, buy at the top, it's kind of a wash, right? You kind of trade across. So that, that was the decision here. Um, and then I wanted to talk a little bit about um, where I think things are going because this is a business channel and uh, you know that's primarily the advice that I give and the advice from my book and the, and the advice from this YouTube channel has been you know how to make more money with your art as an artist but I also am now in the in thinking well maybe some of you guys and 
know, if you've stayed this long in this video, maybe you want to uh, get some of my thoughts on my investing. Now, I'm not giving you investing advice uh, because that would be illegal. I, I, the SEC could come down on me if I did. But I think it's helpful to share um, ideas. I listen to financial channels constantly, all day as I'm working. That's all I've been listening to for the last six months. I've really gotten into this. And, um, and so I started investing in um, different real asset classes. Um, and I don't want to talk about some of them, but I want to talk about some of them. So the, so the, the house was definitely part of that. Um, because I think that that gives you stability, right? Uh, if you can if you can live in a stable situation and have um, and be able to to afford a house, even a, even if you're making a mortgage payment, knowing that you can't get kicked out of that house because it's yours, or you have a, an agreement with the bank, I think is a great a sense of peace of mind if you can get into that. Um, and that 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 took a lot of of sacrifice for me to get into the last house that we sold because if you watch my other video that I have on this channel and if I can find it I'll link it um, it's where we lost our home in the 2009 and 10 uh, market crash and I went we went uh, four years renting trying to scrape together money and I talk about it in that video and that was a lot of sacrifice that I went through um, where we beans and rice and we just really didn't spend money on anything uh, again Dave Ramsey that whole type of a thing there um, to get back to where we even could buy that house and luckily the timing was perfect we bought at the bottom of the market and wrote it up and that's where uh, inflation can really help you um, I, I don't think that um, Overextending yourself is smart, though, especially right now at the top of the market. I think people, if they, if you can't, if you don't have a lot of money to put down on a house, it might be a better idea to wait until the the bubble pops. I do think that the real estate's in a bubble right now, and I do think that the stock market's in a bubble. And I think that um, that we're prices are over are inflated for a lot of different reasons, and um, Boy, this is this is a complicated subject because there's so many parts to it. And again, I've been watching and learning about this stuff for so long. About five or six years ago, I read this book called Fiat Money Inflation in France. And again, I'll, I will link that below. That book changed my life because I realized it opened my eyes to what's actually happening um, in our economy and, with, and the role of the Fed and uh, the money printing that they're doing, that, that our government's doing. And it's not just the US. You know, if you're living outside of the US, it's almost every government in the world right now is trying to solve their, their problems through money printing. Well, it's really important to understand money. I can't remember who said it, but there was a famous financial investor who said that in his estimation, only 1% of the population actually understands what money is. So money is not, I wish I had a dollar, I would have been more prepared, but money is not a paper dollar, okay? That's not money, that's fiat. Uh, money is something that you can exchange for, for the things that you actually want, that's accepted by everyone, um, that actually holds intrinsic value, that actually has a, 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 a finite amount to it. And uh, that brings me into um, talking about like, the the six aspects of money and this was something that until i heard this it you know i didn't know anything about it and and it's funny because these are the things that i think we should be learning in our public schools that we're not the the, the things that the, the tools that we can take with us to help us navigate the the real world okay not the the, the fake world that that um i think a lot of educators think that we're we're going to go into i mean we're not learning we're not learning a lot of the things that we should be learning. So the six, six aspects of money are durability. Okay, so the actual, like, like, can the money physically last by changing hands? Portability, divisibility, uniformity, acceptability, and limited supply. And so with the government printing, as governments printing uh, 
so much money. So, I mean, like right now, we're talking about another $1.9 trillion entering into our our um, our system. And um, that number, that, that money is being created out of thin air. I mean, it's just, they're just adding zeros onto the computer program. And so basically what's happening there is um, the reason we don't use shells or rocks for money is because there's an unlimited, basically an unlimited um, supply of them. They're just too common. So they're not rare. There's, there's no value there, right? And uh, dollar bills were valuable at a time when they were backed up by gold, when they were, um, there was actually, um, you know, they couldn't just create. They're in in the beginning, you know, they wouldn't, they couldn't create more than they had gold. Well, then Nixon took us off the gold standard, I believe, in 1971. And so now we're in a situation where the government can just make as much money as it wants. Now that book, Fiat Money, Inflation in France, talks about historically, uh, from the late 1700s, what happened in France and what happened, it mentions um, other countries, but basically every single fiat currency or paper money currency that's ever been uh, issued has failed over time. In fact, we had a failure in this country in, during the Civil War time. But um, you've got uh, almost every country in the world, and the, the most famous one currently today is Venezuela, where you have uh, you could take a million boulevards and um, and you know you can't really buy anything with it. You can't even really buy a loaf of bread for that because um, the inflation, the hyperinflation, has gone up so far, so high. And and you know people are going to argue, well, that can't happen here. The the dollar is the world reserve currency. The the experts are saying that that the dollar would have crashed 10 or 20 years ago if not for the fact that it is the world currency and that when the, the crash comes or when hyperinflation comes and the dollar crashes, it's gonna crash globally. So it's gonna be a kind of a global event that we're gonna have to work through. So th these aren't necessarily the funnest topics to, to think about, but the reason that I like to talk about them and the reason like I, I like to think about them is because I, like um, I like to prepare for my future. I don't, you know, I, I want to know what's coming and I want to be able to take measures to be reasonably prepared so that I can take advantage uh, financially during times when, when times get tough, not take advantage of other people, but be in a situation where I can actually make money or protect the money that I have so that it doesn't, uh, so that I, I'm not, um, you know, going through the hardship that I think is going to come for some. Um, so one of the things that's going up right now that I'm sure everyone, uh, you know, all of you guys have heard about right now, again, I'm investing in a lot of different asset classes and so I'm, but one that I want to talk about is cryptocurrency and specifically Bitcoin. Um, I invest in Bitcoin. I wish I had bought it when it was, I mean, I had an opportunity to buy it when it was in the thousands, like we all did. That's when I first heard about it. And then, um, I had an opportunity to buy it when it was 4,000 and didn't. I had an opportunity to buy when it was 10,000 and didn't, but I bought over 10,000. Um, and now it's up at, you know, around 50, between 50 and 60,000. Um, now a lot of people are probably zoning out right now and going, oh my gosh, not another Bitcoin person. There are definitely, with, with every asset class that you can invest in, there are pros and cons to it. There are th things that are good and things that are bad about it, or things that, that could be good and things that could be bad about it. So one of the, probably the main um, ding against Bitcoin is that uh, a lot of people say, well, the governments are gonna ban it. So if the governments ban it, then all of a sudden it's gonna crash because you don't have, it's, you can't use it. So if you can't use it, you can't, there's no value. Well, I've, I think that we are actually beyond the point where, go, where our government could ban it. Now there's news last week where India um, mentioned something about banning it in their country. But I don't think that first world countries are going to be able to do that. And the reason is the adoption. So one of the, the things on this list of six things, um, uh, six aspects of money is acceptability. Okay, like, do you recognize it? Like, if I have a, hand you a dollar bill, do you recognize it as money? And we all do, right? The whole world recognizes a dollar bill as money. Even though that dollar bill is worth only four cents of what it was at the turn of the century in the 19, early 1900s. So it has the same buying power today 
of four cents. One dollar is about worth four cents of what it was back in the 1900s. Um, and yet we still look at it as a dollar. But yet if you, you've gone to the grocery store recently, you know that you're not buying the same amount of stuff that you did last year, the year before. So, and, and the government tracks uh, inflation with a, uh, what they call CPI, the Consumer Price Index, and that's a lie. And if you type in, uh, if you want to learn about that, why is the CPI not trusted? And it's, I mean, in a nutshell, it's, it's basically they are not, they're comparing apples to oranges. They don't do straight comparisons when they calculate CPI. So that's how they get those low interest rates year over year and say, we're fine. Don't worry about anything. But when you go and buy real goods, you're like, this is costing way more. And then the reason is because of how they calculate CPI. They don't compare. They, they tell you, they compare things that they think will make you just as happy but they substitute it with cheaper things to make their comparisons year over year. Um, so anyway, but uh, uh, where was I? Um, so it's acceptability. And with Bitcoin, um, it is getting more and more acceptability every day, every week. Um, in the, in the, when it crashed down in 2017, uh, there were uh, top hedge fund managers like Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan who said, I will fire any uh, trader who buys Bitcoin, any of my traders who buy Bitcoin, who is now saying openly, oops, we're now buying Bitcoin for our hedge fund. So you've got companies like um, Chase and Citibank, Tesla, obviously Elon Musk just re recently bought uh, one and a half billion of, of Bitcoin. Citibank, uh, or I already mentioned that one, PayPal, Square, um, a lot of the hedge funds. In fact, Mr. Wonderful from the Shark Tank was against Bitcoin. Now he's got it in his portfolio, same with Mark Cuban. And it's because, the so a lot of people will just, it's, it's always surprising to me how many people will just hear something and laugh. They'll laugh in your face, ah, you're buying Bitcoin. And then you start asking them hard questions about it, like real questions that they can't answer. And then you're, you're like, okay, so they're just exposing their ignorance. Okay. So the, the thing that you need to do, if you're one of those people who, cause I was also, I was one of those people who was like, ah, Bitcoin. But then I had to I go, well, why are these rich people? Why are they, why do the banks want? Cause the banks are always ahead of us. Okay. Just know this. When you go to buy a car, sidetrack for a second here. When you go to buy a car, there's three people involved, right? There's the car dealer, there's the bank, and there's you, okay? Two of them don't want the car. So who's smarter? Two, two of them do not want the car. They'd rather have the cash. They'd rather have the money. And that means that you're getting the worst end of the deal. The banks always are always ahead of the game. The banks don't lose. What happened in 2012, there are 10 and 12 when we had the crash? Who didn't lose? The banks. Why? Because they write the laws. Um, and so that, that's my, my next thing really is with, with Bitcoin is it, once it's been adopted by the banks, which it already is, and there's so many announcements from hedge funds that are going to be buying Bitcoin in 2021 that haven't bought it yet. So your chance to buy Bitcoin now, you can front run a lot of the money that's coming in, this wave of money, institutional money. And that's one of the things that really caught my eye, really got me excited about it. Um, and and so um, so yeah, you have these guys that are that are switching, and you have to ask yourself, well, why? And the reason really comes down to the fact that we're all going to be switching to digital money anyway. Okay, every government in the world right now is talking about, including the U.S., about switching to a digital monetary system um, and going away from the dollar. So the IMF is talking about that openly, and. So you have all these organizations that are now um, openly talking about moving to a digital wallet on your phone where you'll make all your purchases and, and, and all, even, even before that though, your, all your, um, your banking account information, it's all digital, all online. So as people start to move to a new currency, dealing with, they'll probably roll out stimulus in the future or UBI in the form of your digital wallet, digital bank account. If people are getting money that is deflating or that's losing value, and then they look over at some cryptocurrencies and say, well, how come those are going up while this is going down? Well, the reason is 
that the government will never promise us that there will be a limited supply of their digital money. Whereas in Bitcoin, there can only ever be 21 million coins. There can't be 21 million coins because we won't live long enough to see 21 million because the last Bitcoin will be mined in 2148. But besides that, there's been three or four million that have been lost in landfills from the people that bought early on when each coin was a dollar or two dollars or something like that, forgot about it and threw their computer away in the landfill. So they're, and they're even trying to mine some of those for trying to find some of those computer hard drives. Um, so in, in, in finding out like, why do these, why do these wealthy banks and hedge fund managers and, and investors want Bitcoin? Well, it's limited. And um, it's divisible. It has all the aspects of money. It's durable because you've got it. I mean, as long as we have electricity, and that's another ding, we could be in a situation where we don't have electricity. Um, you can take it wherever you want. It's portable. You can divide, divide it. It's so much more powerful than gold and silver, even though I do like gold and silver, but for different reasons. But, they, but it is, um, you can divide it down to a, a tenth of a millionth Bitcoin. Um, it's got, of course, it's got uniformity and as over time, it will become more and more acceptable or more and more accepted. And as it becomes more and more accepted, you're going to see people getting into it in mass. And, and that's, that's slowly happening right now. It's actually ramping up pretty fast. So that's one of the things that I, I have, uh, definitely believe in. And I think if you, if you start watching YouTube videos on Bitcoin, if you, now you'll hear, you will hear the negative side. And I think that's really healthy and actually seek out, um, people that don't like it. And I, and I want to hear why, and I want to hear, then I will, I'll take their argument of what they don't like about it. And I'll try to find a video that that deals with that like that that aspect and see what the other side is and so far the only the biggest thing that i see about bitcoin um is that uh, like right now if you sell your bitcoin and, and convert it into cash you have to pay taxes here in the u.s and I'm, I'm assuming that you have to do the same thing in in other countries um but the tax rate is is pretty nominal i mean it's 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 a normal tax rate, what we're used to over here. Um, but the way that the government, this is, this is probably the worst thing that I've heard against Bitcoin is that, yeah, sometime in the future, the government could, um, they might even promote it. A lot of people think that, that our government is going to really promote Bitcoin with the plan of hiking a tax rate on it. And if they jack the, the percentage tax rate up on Bitcoin, it could crash it because everyone would try to get their money out before that went into effect before that date went into effect and that could cause it to tumble and that's probably the worst thing but right now um, i feel like it's a great investment and a lot of people are a lot of investors are saying based on the market cap of bitcoin now and where gold is where gold is 12 trillion a market cap and bitcoin is right around 1 trillion that is um it will it's it's creeping up at an alarming rate to where uh, the market cap will get to a, a situation where every coin will probably have to be worth somewhere between two and four hundred thousand dollars per coin. Um, and I definitely think that that a six figure Bitcoin is going to come before the end of 2021. So it'd be interesting to check in on this to see if that prediction is right, because a lot of people right now are going to say, well, I don't want to buy now because it's it, it's it's at the top. It's at 50,000. Well, they said that. They've been saying that when it hit a thousand dollars, they said that when it hit 4,000, they said that when I remember in 2017, we had a guy that we hired for svslearn.com to, um, be our AV guy for a production that we did in house. And he owned a bunch of Bitcoin. And I was like, well, you're obviously going to sell right now. And it was at like 14,000. And I was like, and I was like, when did you buy? And he bought around $300. And I'm like, dude, you are rich. Like, how are you going to cash it all in? And he's like, no, they're way too valuable. I will not sell them. And then it went up to 20,000 in um, that same year. And I couldn't, I couldn't ask him about it because it had, it went up to 20,000 then it went down to 4,000. And I was like, oh, he's probably got this. He's probably hating life. Well, I saw him again later on as it was back at 10,000 again. 
And he, I'm, I'm like, you still have your Bitcoin? He's like, oh yeah, it's gonna go way up. It'll be six figures um, in the next year or two. And right now, I mean, it hit 62,000 last week. Um, and I fully believe that it will based on on all the predictions and, and people give real fundamentals. I'm not, uh, I'm not someone who studies the charts and studies the, um, all the different bond markets and, and, and where money's moving to and why, you know, who's putting money where. And, and I mean, these guys have calculated, um, which hedge funds have announced what percentage of their portfolio they're going to put in Bitcoin. And they're coming up with these, um, educated predictions on it being six figures by the end of the year. So, um, I'm definitely doing that. Um, I also really believe that um, probably the most important thing that you can do um, is prepare your, your home, um, prepare with having supplies, having you know extra food on hand, extra um, toiletries and things that you need. Uh, because as I do believe that, that we are gonna devalue the dollar, um, and I think we're gonna have to go through a kind of a reset, you'll hear that word a lot uh, that people are talking about where we might have to go through some, a little bit of some tough times in order to come out on the other side. Um, and so I just think it's really important to really plan on taking care of yourself and to buy the things that you think you're going to need in the future with today's dollars before they become inflated. Um, I do think that we will recover relatively quickly. Um, I think that we have so much ingenuity and so much um, uh, um, intelligence right now that I do believe that we will be able to figure out a way out of this mess. I don't think it'll be easy, but I think, and I think there will be some pain points. But I think as artists, one of the things, and this is this is one of the things I put in my book, and one of the things that I fully believe in, is we're living in a time right now where you can create anything, you anything that you can think of. The technology is now caught up. So, you know, in this video, I talked about the NFTs. Any, any physical product or digital product or anything that you want to make it used to be a barrier where you couldn't do it as an artist. You couldn't do it with a small group or as an individual. You had to have a big corporation behind you to, to print something. You know, you had to go through these gatekeepers like publishers. You had to go through record labels if you were a musician. Uh, you had to sell your idea to a manufacturer to make a product. Well, now you can you can raise the money on your own. You can you know the 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 the, uh, the Kickstarter crowdfunding uh, playbook that I'm going to be releasing. It's so exciting to me to be able to talk about this stuff because if you can dream it, you can do it now. And as the artist, you're the one who's creating the intellectual property. Whereas there are so many entrepreneurs out there that have to try to find someone else's IP or they, they see someone that has a good idea and they either try to steal it or they try to talk you out of it by buying you out of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of game creators that Hasbro has bought their game. So now it belongs to Hasbro. But at one point that was an idea in an artist's brain and the, and the artist kind of brought it to life. And some of them, you know, got a little bit of percentage and have done quite well, made, you know, some hundreds of thousands of dollars. Meanwhile, Hasbro is making millions of dollars. Well, now is a time where if you have an idea for a game or for a book or for a comic or for whatever you want to do, you can make it, you can find an audience that will love it and to, that will give you the money to go and produce that thing. Whether we're using dollars or whether we're using Fed coins or whatever we're going to be using, we're going to need to do something in the future. We're going to need to be producing constantly as artists, whether we're creating NFTs, whether we're whatever it is that we're doing. Um, and I just think it's important to, to really spend and focus a lot of your time on the creation of your art, on the marketing of your art, and then also on the preserving the money that you get when it, when it does come in. Um, and, and being smart with, with the money that you spend and with the investments that you make. Um, again, this is not investing advice, but I do, I, I like to share what I'm into. And this is a kind of a, a different thing on this channel. I would love to know what you guys think. I'll read the comments for a week or two. And I, I want to know if you think I'm crazy for buying Bitcoin. I want to know if some of you guys own Bitcoin out there. Um, or any other assets, um, gold or silver or 
or real estate or um, you know a lot of companies are lot you know it, it's hard to buy water and timber and things like that but that's really where a lot of money is going right now is into hard asset commodities um, oil and things like that um, copper uh, copper's set to explode I think so anyway the video cut out but uh, I was done anyway um, and uh, don't subscribe and don't like this video unless you actually like it. I'll hopefully see you on the next video pretty soon.